Hey everybody! Today we're making some beautiful bar charts in R using ggplot. I've already loaded up tidyverse and pulled up the relevant help file for geo and bar. I've also set my theme to minimal. I'm a little tired of the gray background on all of my plots. I'm going to do a couple of different examples. To start, I want to use the car seats dataset, which is included in the ISLR2 package. That's a package of data sets supporting the textbook um, Introduction to Statistical Learning with Applications in R, which I highly recommend. Let's start by glimpsing our data set with glimpse um, car seats. And let's pull up the help file for that as well with question mark car seats. So here you can see that we have a simulated data set of 400 um, different stores that are selling car seats. We have information like the sales, um, the price, the competitor's price, and so on. To start, I'm going to be interested in shelving location. And you can see that's a factor variable. It has three levels for good, medium, and bad. So I'm curious at how many of the stores in this data set were the car seats having a good shelving location, and how many were they bad, and how many were they medium. So let's do a ggplot. The data set, of course, is car seats. For my aesthetics, I'm just going to specify an X aesthetic. For a bar chart, fundamentally, we're talking about a single variable plot. So let's put that single variable on the X axis, shell location. And let's start really basic just with geome bar. And let's just get a, a nice black and white plot, gray on white plot. All right, so that's OK. There's any number of things that we can do to um, make this nicer. We can change the color of the bars, etc. One additional argument I will point out here is width. If we want to make these bars a little wider or a little narrower, we can change that here. The default is 90%, um, and so I want to make it, let's say, 60%. All right, great. Let's. Um, also, and let's also color these bars. But let's do it now um, so that each of the different shelving locations has its own color. So what I want to do here is to actually change the inside color, not the, the boundary color. So the argument I need is fill equals. Of course, this is going inside the aesthetic because I want to map the variable shelving location to the fill aesthetic. So I want different colors for each bar. And I need a comma, clearly. OK, so there we are. There's a couple things I don't love about this, several things. First of all, the um, labels could be better. I could fix those. Second thing I don't love is that this default color scheme isn't colorblind friendly. So I'm going to go ahead and fix that with scale fill brewer palette equals dark two. It's sort of my default go to for exploratory analysis. Um, and the other thing that I don't love is that the categories in this plot are labeled twice. And this happens a lot with our bar charts in R, with ggplot. The shelving location is listed both on the x-axis and in the legend. And the reason for that is that we have the shelve location mapped to two different aesthetics. So the way, thing I'd like to do here is to get rid of the legend. And so I can just add the argument to the geom bar function show.legend equals false. There we go. Not quite so repetitive now, is it? Frequently when you're doing bar charts, you'll want to break down a bar chart by a second categorical variable. And that's the next thing I'd like to do. So if we look back at our data set here, you'll see that we have a couple other factor variables. And I'm going to be interested in the US variable. So this is encoding whether or not the store is located in the United States. So let's see here. I'm just going to copy and paste my basic ggplot. And um, this time, I want my x-axis to actually be whether or not the store is in the US. And then I want the fill to be shelf location. So now I'm going to have US and not US on the x-axis. And the fill is going to be different. The color fill is going to be different based on these different shelf locations. Of course, it is still supposed to be a bar chart. OK, so you can see, as expected, here I have in the US on the right, not in the US on the left. What R has done by default is to um, break down those simple bars into three colors each. And you can, you can see exactly what R is doing more clearly 
if we remove this fill aesthetic temporarily, like so, where now it's black and white. Put it back in. There we go. Okay, so um, this particular view is really stressing the um, overall counts of stores that are in the US and not in the US. It really is relegating the shelving location to second class status, which is good for some purposes, but it's also possible we might be more interested in how the proportions break down. And so what we can do is alter, let me just neaten this up a little, we can alter um, the, the position argument inside of GeomBar to change how the relative um, shelving locations are broken down. And so it's position equals quote, let's start with fill. And this is gonna stress the relative proportions. What has been done now is um, it has constructed a bar with a total height of one for each of the groups for the US variable, no and yes. And then um, we can very clearly see the relative proportions for the shelving location. Here we can see that uh, within the US, there are slightly more stores that have a good shelving location and slightly fewer that have a medium shelving location. Um, the default position argument, by the way, is stack. And so if you leave out the position equals, this is what you'll get. The final one I wanna point out is position equals, <laughs> position equals dodge. And this is sort of a compromise between the other two. We are not just stressing the relative proportions of shelving locations, nor are we just stressing the relative counts of the US versus non-US. Here we're trying to get some, um, we're trying to get a display that pays some respect to both of those. So as I look at this plot, I can see both that there are more um, stores located in the US that are in this sample, and that there is a slightly higher prevalence, relatively speaking, um, outside of the US for bad locations for the shelving. The last thing I wanna do here, by the way, oh, I feel like I should also be including this scale fill um, brewer, both of these. I meant to copy that the whole time. Okay, so the last thing I wanna do is just illustrate what happens if we swap around the um, aesthetics. So I'm just copying and pasting that last one. Instead of putting the um, US variable on the x-axis, I'm now gonna put the shelving location on the x-axis and fill it by US. And let's just see how that changes things. Okay, so now on the x-axis, as you would expect, I have shelving location and it's broken down by US. Compare that to the other one where we had the location US broken down by shelving location. And um, it's displaying exactly the same data, just giving a different emphasis to the, to the plot and therefore addressing a slightly different data question. Here we're seeing how do shelving locations break down according to whether or not the um, store was in the US or not. And on this one, we see how, do, um, how does the prevalence of the store being in the US break down according to the shelving location. That's a little bit more difficult to state as a, as a realistic data question. Okay, the next thing I wanna do, I wanna do one more example, and this is gonna use um, the nurse's data set. This is taken from a Tidy Tuesday data challenge from back in 2021. If you're not familiar with Tidy Tuesday, I highly recommend taking a look at that. You can Google it, and then uh, you'll very quickly find your way to this GitHub page. I'm using the Tidy Tuesday R package to um, import this data set directly from the web. Let's just take a quick look at the nurse's data set. I'll use the viewer for this one. Okay, so um, here we have a number of observations for the different United States plus the District of Columbia and I think the Virgin Islands in different, um, in different years. Uh, for simplicity, I'm going to just want to look at 2020. So let's save this as nurses 2020. And I just want to filter. I want to take this nurses data set and I want to filter it so that year is 2020. Let's take a look at that. Let me 
make sure I did it right. All right, so I've got 54 entries, so it looks like we've got the different US territories. Yes, Guam, Puerto Rico, and the US Virgin Islands. Fabulous. So what I would like is to get a bar chart for the total employed nurses in each state. Obviously, this is going to be highly dependent on the population. So for a full data analysis, we'd want to take that into account. So um, in this case, let's just start with my ggplot. I'm using nurses 2020. Again, just one aesthetic to start. And I want state. But you'll see if I were to do a geom bar on this, something's going to go wrong. Because in this data set, each state is only represented once. I'm not wanting R to go through and just count the number of times each state appears in my set, the way I did with the car seats data set, where I was literally asking R to figure out how many times the shelving location was good, how many times it was bad, and how many times it was medium. In this case, what I want R to do is to read sort of frequencies from a different column. In this case, total employed RN. So I'm actually going to be trying to specify two different aesthetics, an X aesthetic for the states and a Y aesthetic for total employed RNs. So although it is going to be a bar chart, I'm going to be doing this slightly differently using geom call, which is going to allow for a second aesthetic. So it is what total employed RN and it's geom call. There we go. And at first, this is going to be just a total mess. Of course, there's 54 things and we're trying to get 54 different bars. My next thing is going to be to fix all that up. Going back to this help file, I just want to point out very clearly when we're doing bar charts in R, there's two different geoms that we're using. Geom bar, if you're wanting R to calculate the frequencies itself. Geom call, if you actually have a column of frequencies. I think when you're starting out, you end up Googling that difference quite a bit. All right, so let's make this plot a little bit nicer. The first thing that I'm seeing is that um, all of the state names and territory names are overlapping. One thing that we can do to help with that is just to invert the way that we're doing this and to put the state names going up and down and the total number of employees going left and right, total number of RNs going left and right. All right, so that's potentially a little bit better. Um, the next two things I'd like to do are to actually have, let's just say the top 20 states in this plot. I don't think like, I don't feel like I need to see all of these. So um, I want to do that. And then the other thing I'm going to want to do is to put these bars in order. I'd like to have the state with the most RNs at the top and then um, going down, have states with fewer and fewer. I'm going to go back to where I did this filter. And uh, I'm also going to do a slice max command on this. I have a whole vid um, on the slice command. I'll throw a link up top for you if you wanted to learn more about that. And um, I want order by, and I want to order by this same variable, the total employed RNs, rather than try and type that again. I think I'll copy and paste it. And I think I said, let's do 20 to start. All right, so that's going to substantially reduce my data set and hopefully make this look a little better. OK, so great. Now I'm only seeing. Um, the top 20 states with the most RNs in them. The next thing I want to do is to put this in order. So what I'd like to do is to reorder the state variable according to the total employed RN. So that is factor reorder. And I want to reorder the state variable according to the total employed RN. I think that does it. There we go. The, um, I'm not going to feel right if I don't change these labels. So let's change the Y label <laughs> just to state. And I can fix um, the X label and put a, a title on it as well, but I think that's sufficient for our purposes.